Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. We want to be loving neighbors, but how? We're discovering how in this blessed series. In last week's message, this week's, and the weeks to come, we're learning what it looks like to love those who literally live right around us. The series is called BLESS because we're using this acronym BLESS as a framework to remember and apply five hyper-practical ways that we can love like Jesus where we live. And here is what BLESS stands for. B, begin with prayer. L, listen. E, eat. S, serve. And S, share. As we talked about last time, BLESS isn't a formula. BLESS is a lifestyle. It's how we go about what we do with whoever we're with. And most of the time, that's right where we live in our neighborhoods. Now, we talked about last week that we love our neighbors first by praying for our neighbors. We begin in prayer. And what we did is we actually started to learn our neighbors' names. Some of us knew more neighbors than others, but we're all getting to know our neighbors better. And we used this tool, this neighbor magnet, to help us understand the people who live right around us. So maybe you added some names since filling this out last week. If you have the the neighbor map magnet, you can of course put that on your fridge. If you want a digital version, we have one in the app as well. Now, what my family's been doing and what we challenged all of us to do this past week is to begin by praying for each of our neighbors by name every day. So when our family sits down for dinner, myself or, or Amanda will grab this neighbor map magnet from our fridge and then what we'll do is we'll ask Hannah, our three and a half year old, who should we pray for tonight? And she'll point to a neighbor. We'll point to the house in our neighborhood that you know, these neighbors live in so that she kind of starts to connect the dots and then we pray for them. We pray that we'll get to know them better. We'll pray for their families. We'll pray for anything we know that's going on in their lives. We'll pray for their salvation. Now, what about you? What's this look like for you this week? Did you add new names to your neighbor map magnet? Have you been praying for your neighbors by name? I'm curious, what have you noticed the Holy Spirit doing in you as you're praying for your neighbors? What I've been noticing is that my heart is, is just softer towards my neighbors. I'm less annoyed. I, I'm more interested in starting a conversation with them, getting to know them. If I'm at the park with the girls or on a walk, I'm a little less rushed to get home. Instead, I'm, I'm willing to linger a little longer, maybe start a conversation when in the past I, I might have just kind of sat on the bench or hung out with the girls without making a whole lot of effort to get to know others. But through this series and, and through praying for my neighbors, I found myself wanting to love like Jesus with specifically the people who, well, they live right around me. Hope the same is happening for you. So keep getting to know your neighbors, keep praying for them. And the other challenge that we were posed with last week was to prayer walk our neighborhoods every week. Now, this first time, we actually did it all together as a church because anytime we do something new or learn a new principle, new practice, it's just better to do it with others. So a bunch of us gathered yesterday at the Lone Tree Rec Center. And what we did is we just broke up into groups and we walked through our church's neighborhood and we prayed for our church's neighbors. If you're able to join us, you know it was a good time. If you weren't able to make it, we missed you. But the challenge for all of us going forward is that in the coming weeks, for the remainder of this 40 days of prayer, prayer walk your own personal neighborhood once a week for the next, let's say, five weeks. And let's just see what God does when we follow him in this way. Now, I mentioned it last time, but in case you haven't gotten a chance to do it yet, if you'd like a little nudge, a little friendly reminder, a little encouragement to pray for your neighbors and to prayer walk your neighborhood and just kind of implement these new habits into your lifestyle, well, you can subscribe to our push notifications on the app. You just click on your profile button and then you can make sure prayer is selected and a couple times a week, we'll send you a little friendly reminder to be praying for those who live right around you. All right, what we've been talking about up until now is beginning with prayer. It's a way that we can love our neighbors, but what's next? Like, where do we go from there? Listening, 
we listen to our neighbors. Listening isn't a complex concept. It's actually a rather simple one. But even though it's simple, listening's becoming ever more of a lost art in our culture today. In an age of social media, we've been conditioned to think that we can and should share our opinion about anything and everything whenever we feel like it. Whether it's our morning coffee or our opinion on the issue, we feel the complete freedom to just proclaim it to the world. Oddly enough, we squirm at the thought of somebody standing on a street, street corner with a bullhorn shouting their opinion to those who pass by. And yet, many of us will sit on our couch in our proverbial street corners, shouting our opinions to the world as if everyone's listening. The only thing is, no one's listening because everyone's doing the same. Now, if we want to love like Jesus, then we need to take what his brother said to heart, where James, the brother of Jesus, said we should be quick to listen and slow to speak. This is the opposite of our culture, which is quick to speak and slow to listen. But we, as followers of Jesus, we want to love like Jesus. So if that's going to be the case, we've got to learn to listen as a way that we love others. And to do that, we're going to look at an account from Jesus' ministry today. So if you've got a Bible, turn with me to Luke 18, 35 through 43. And we're going to see how Jesus loves the person in front of him by listening. Now, if you need a Bible, you can, of course, follow along on our free church app, where there's also a place you can jot down some notes during the message. <clears throat> As we prepare to learn from Jesus, to love the person in front of us by listening, let's pray and let's ask that God would give us ears of listening, that he would speak to us right now. Will you bow your heads? Let's pray together. God, thank you for your love for us and thank you that we get to display your love to others. Would you Give us ears to listen, ears to hear what you want to say to us today. And would you make us great listeners, loving listeners to our literal neighbors? We've been praying this for the last week. We're going to continue to pray it. And we just ask God that our neighbors would experience your love expressed through us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, picking up the story in Luke 18, 35 and following. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard the crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. So here we've got Jesus on his way into the city of Jericho, and he's got quite the entourage with him. And the, the crowd in his wake, well, they're making quite a bit of commotion. There's a blind beggar there. He can't see what's happening, so he asks someone to fill him in. And they tell him that Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. So the guy calls out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those leading the entourage, they just rebuke the guy. They, they dismiss him. You know, he... He couldn't see, and now he felt unseen. But it doesn't stop him. He shouts all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Now, what do you suppose Jesus did? Just pass by? Of course not. We're talking about Jesus here, right? So he just healed the guy. Actually, not so fast. Check out what he did. Luke records it and what he says next. Now in verses 40 and 41, Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. When he came near, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see, he replied. Jesus, who is fully God and fully man, like Jesus knows everything because he's, he's fully God. Jesus asks a question. What? Why would Jesus do that? Healing the guy on the spot, that would have been way more efficient. But he asks a question. Why a question? Questions, questions are slow. Because when we ask a question, we have to listen. But Jesus knows something about this guy. He knows something about us. He knows something about the 
human condition. It's, it's core to who we are. As people, we want to be known. We want to be loved. And when somebody uh, is, is wanting to share you know, their opinion, that's, that's one thing. But when they're sharing it, you know what they really want? They want someone to hear them. They want to be known. They want to be loved. So in asking this guy a question, he invites the guy to share what he wants. Jesus doesn't assume he knows the answer. He asks instead. And in so doing, this guy gets to share that he wants to see. Of course he wants to see, but now he's articulating it. And when Jesus hears him, the guy feels known. He feels loved. And the same is true with our neighbors. You see, if we're to love like Jesus, then we need to follow Jesus in this way. To love your neighbor, listen to your neighbor. In the message, it's a paraphrase that Eugene Peterson wrote. He, he writes Proverbs 18, 13 this way. He says, answering before listening is both stupid and rude. Okay, no one likes stupid and rude neighbors. So let's be loving neighbors and let's listen before we speak. Jesus demonstrates that conversation is really key to connection. And I've been thinking about this, how conversation and, and the depth, the level of connection, how they're linked the last uh, few days, weeks. And what I've noticed is that there is a, a tie there. Now, at this point, what I should do is I should have my wife, Amanda, take over for me and share the rest of this because she is much better at conversation and connecting in conversation than I am. But she's not one for public speaking, so here I am. You're stuck with me. But here's what I've been thinking about. And what I've noticed is that there are like three levels of conversation, each with a, a deeper level of connection tied to them. And the first is this, casual. Casual conversation is like surface level small talk. This is when we ask someone about the weather, what they do for work, what they do for fun, what they're doing for vacation. And casual conversation, it's normal. I mean, just about every relationship starts here. So it's a good thing, embrace it. But if you want the conversation, if you want the connection to go deeper, the conversation has to go deeper. And that's where we find ourselves with meaningful conversation. Meaningful conversation is a little deeper than casual. At this point, now we're sharing our thoughts, our feelings, our opinions on things, how something impacted us. And we're talking about our family, things that are close to us. Now, if you've ever had a conversation like I've had, uh, oh, excuse me, if you've ever had a conversation with my wife, which I have had, you would know something about her. She is great at meaningful conversation. And the reason is, is she asks like thoughtful questions. She's listening to people as they're sharing. And then she asks a curious question to get to know more, how that impacted them, how it made them felt. You know what? I want to be more like her in that way. And whether you're like my wife, Amanda, or you're a little bit more like me, we can all learn and we can all grow in asking questions that lead conversations to a more meaningful nature. Now we're going to get to how we can do that here in a moment, but there's a third level of conversation that I've noticed. And that third level is spiritual conversations. Spiritual conversations, they get to the heart of the matter. They're, they're thrilling to be a part of, but they're terrifying to enter into. Because in spiritual conversations, we start to ask deep questions, existential questions, theological questions. Maybe we or the other person start to share about our faith background, our, our story, maybe our encounter with Jesus or our experience with church. I actually got to have a spiritual conversation just the other week with some of our new neighbors. Adam and Vaish moved in to town, or moved into our neighborhood at least, uh, maybe like last December, and we got to know them a little bit. I'll share a little bit about that here in a, in a little while, but we've been getting to know them slowly, more so this summer, and we're just at the park one afternoon. Hannah and Chloe are, are running around. They're playing. They come outside that with their kids, and they're, they're playing too, and Adam and I are just chatting, you know, kind of shooting the breeze, and unknowingly, <laughs> Adam just asks a pretty casual question. He's like, so what do you do for work? Little did he know what he was getting into. 
he asks, and I just, you know, I just share. I'm like, you know, I actually am a pastor. We're starting a church in the area. And I could tell that he wasn't really sure where to go with it. So I just asked him, I'm like, you know, are you guys part of our church? And he said no. So I just, I just genuinely and, and gently just said, hey, you guys should come check out Connect sometime. And then I didn't want to pressure him in any way. So I just, you know, continued and said, what was your experience like growing up with faith? And he actually, he opened up and he starts to share about how he, he grew up Jewish. And then Vice jumps in and she talks about how she grew up Hindu and how they're, neither of them really practice Judaism or Hinduism now because it was kind of a confusing experience for them growing up. So I just am listening and listening and it was fascinating. I was learning things about, especially Hinduism. I, I know less about Hinduism than Judaism, but just listening. And I, I look down on my watch and I see that Amanda's calling us in for dinner. So I said, you know, guys, I'm sorry, I got to go. It's time for us to eat dinner. But as I'm heading out, I'm gathering the girls and Adam, Adam just says, you know, hey, thanks for, thanks for talking with us. This was really interesting. I'm excited to talk more. I thought, I am too. This is good. Spiritual conversations don't have to be awkward. They don't have to be weird. Uh, you know, we, we want to have spiritual conversations with our neighbors, but often we'll hold back because we don't want to be weird. And, and you know what? There's probably a good element to that because when someone's asking us about the weather and we transition it to Jesus, that's weird. It's awkward. And most of us have the social awareness to realize that it is, so we just don't go there problem is we don't go there ever. But there is a time, there is a place when conversation can deepen from casual to meaningful, from meaningful to spiritual. And I would love to talk about what that could look like. But first we have to kind of highlight a, a key element of how we conduct ourselves in conversations if we ever want to see a conversation deepen. And that is this, we got to actively listen. You've probably heard this before, so you probably do this at times. And when we're active list, actively listening, do you know what we're doing? We're fully dialed in, we're fully present with the person talking to us. We're focused on what they're saying right here, right now, instead of focusing on what we wanna say next. I know you've probably never done that in a conversation before, but you're, you're, we're dialed in on what they're saying because they're important in the moment. All right, and then when we're, when we're listening, you know what we're listening for? We're listening for like a trigger word, something that catches our attention, it makes us curious. And, and when they're done asking or speaking, you know what we do? We don't speak, we ask. We ask a question to learn more. That's what active listening is all about. Now, if we were to connect the dots between what we're learning about conversations and listening and active listening, and transitioning conversations to greater depths, here's what it could look like. Okay, say you're walking around your neighborhood. You've been praying for your neighbors. When you see one out in the front yard, now you're a little more inclined to strike up a conversation. So you say hi, you make some small talk, and it comes up that your neighbor is gonna be going to the mountains this weekend because as they say, they just need a break. Now, you could keep the conversation casual and you could ask something simple like, oh cool, where are you guys going? Or you could make the conversation a little more meaningful. You could ask something like, wow, kind of sounds like life's been a little stressful recently. Can I ask what's been going on? Or say you're now sitting at the park, another scenario. You're sitting at the park, you're on the bench, your neighbor mom friend is sitting next to you and she's just sharing, you guys are talking about life and she starts to share how finances have been really tight recently. It's actually causing a lot of stress at home now, you have a bunch of different options here. You could actually transition the conversation back to casual because you might feel a little awkward about this and you could just say, so mm, that sounds rough. You're gonna pick up some extra shifts at work. You could keep the conversation meaningful. You could ask something like, how, how has that been impacting your marriage? Or you could even take the conversation down another level of depth and you could ask a spiritual question. Maybe you'd say something like, you know, faith has really influenced the way that I think about finances. What about you? What's your experience with faith, Ben, and how's that changed the way you think about money? 
The goal isn't necessarily uh, to, to just, you know, go to super deep really fast. The goal is to connect with the person, to listen to them, to love them. Now, when we listen, when we hear somebody's need, what do we do? Well, we should probably do what we've seen Jesus do, and we're going to see him do here. But you know what I got to do? I actually jumped ahead. I want to I come back to one more thing, okay? Back to your neighbor map, right? You're getting to know your neighbors, okay? You can do this right now if you have the, the neighbor map close to you. You could do this later when you sit down and you pray for your neighbors over dinner, whatever it is. I want you to, sometime this week, just take a look at your neighbor map and say, where am I at conversation level wise with my neighbors? Okay? It's helpful to realize like, okay, what's, what's kind of the depth of our relationship? And when I did this, I look at this and I think, okay, Colander, like I've had a, I've had a casual conversation with him. Uh, Jay and Tom, they live a, a, across the block from us, had some conversations with them, more casual in nature. You know, over the last year, I've, I've talked to Gervinder, I've talked to, to uh, Jeff and Shane, and then even, like I just shared, Adam and Vaish. I've had some more spiritual conversations. But when I, when I look at this, you know what actually stands out? Kazmi and Kendra, I actually haven't talked to very much. I know their names, but I don't really know what's going on in their lives. So here's my prayer right now, and I would invite you to pray the same. God, would you give me an opportunity this week to get to know those who I haven't talked to recently, and to have a deeper conversation with those I have. So that's the challenge. Just have a deeper conversation with a neighbor this week. And like I was alluding to just a moment ago, when we're in these conversations and we hear what's going on in their lives, you know what becomes clear? The needs that people have in their lives. When Jesus hears the need of this blind beggar that he wants to see, now he acts. Back in verse 42, Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Because Jesus first listened, because he invited the guy to speak, to affirm this guy's, the blind beggar's belief that Jesus could in fact heal him, Jesus, now when he does act, he is is just rubber stamping that guy's faith. He is affirming it. And they have a deeper level of connection because they had a conversation. in our neighborhoods, the way we're going to know about the needs of our neighbors is first by listening. You see, like when Adam and Vice, when they moved in back in December, I actually didn't meet them initially. Amanda met them. They came to our door. They had a question. And in that conversation, Amanda just learned that Vice was pregnant with their second. So we actually didn't see them much. But when May rolled around, Amanda was like, you know what? I think Vice is due with her baby here really soon. I wonder if they've had the baby yet. Well, in passing by, we found out that they did. Now, Amanda wanted to do something to celebrate with them. We don't know them super well, so she thought, you know what, I'm just gonna make cookies. So uh, Hannah and Amanda, they one afternoon they baked cookies. And then when I got home from work, Hannah and I got to go deliver them to Adam and Vice. And we just said, you know, congrats on having your baby. If you're thinking, why cookies? Don't overthink it. Cookies are always a good gift. Now, when you are in conversations with your neighbors, needs are going to become clear to you. And while you might not have the ability in your own power to just heal someone who's blind, God could use you to do that. But you know what you can do? For sure, you can for sure bake some cookies. And when we listen, love happens. This blind guy, he felt unseen, but Jesus, Jesus made him feel seen, feel loved. We can make our neighbors feel seen, known, and loved when we listen to them too. And when we listen, God changes us. He he changes the relationship that we have with them. He deepens the level of connection, and God ultimately is glorified. I mean, check this out. This is how the, this account in Jesus's ministry wraps up. This is verse 43. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus, praising God. When all the people saw it, they praised God too. As a result of God's love expressed through Jesus to this blind guy, he praises God and those who are present, they praise God too. What if 
when we love our literal neighbors? What if they praised God one day? What if our neighborhood praised God one day? You see, when we listen, love happens. And when love happens, God is glorified. So go bless your neighbors this week. Begin in prayer and listen. And next time, we'll talk about eating. But until then, what has God been saying to you today? How are you supposed to bless your neighbors this week? Do you need to strike up a conversation with a neighbor that you haven't talked to ever in a long time? Or do you need to follow up on a conversation that you had with somebody? Do you need to be more present when you're in conversations with your neighbors? Less rushed, more present. What is it? Let us know on your Connect card and we'd love to pray for you this week. And maybe somebody's been praying for you. Maybe somebody even invited you today to check this out, to listen, to watch, and you would just love to start a relationship with Jesus. You can do that by turning from your sin and turning to Jesus. He forgives you and he would love for you to follow him. So if you would like to decide to follow Jesus, you can do that all because of his grace, his mercy that he extends to you. Let us know on your Connect card and we will follow up this week so that we can encourage you and get to know you a little bit more and help you follow Jesus. Let me pray for all of us. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for the example of Jesus. It's amazing how he always seemed to ask a question instead of just jumping to the answer. It's like 99% of the time he responds this way. God, would we do the same? Would your love be expressed through us this week and would it be experienced by our neighbors as we listen well? In Jesus' name, amen.